convection? Convection is the process by which heat energy can be transferred through a fluid. So what's a fluid? Well, a fluid is any substance that can flow. So all liquids and all gases are fluids, but solids are not. One more term we need to know about if we're going to explain how convection happens is density. Density is a measure of how closely the particles of the substance are packed together. The further the particles are apart, the lower the density of the substance. So using what we know about the arrangement of particles in solids, liquids and gases, we can say that in solids and liquids the particles are close together, so they have high densities. In gases the particles are far apart, so they have very low densities. If we use a Bunsen burner to heat a beaker of water, we can see, if we put a, a coloured substance in the water, the water circulate, like shown in the animation, where the warm water rises up to the top and then cools and sinks back down again. And this circulation is called a convection current. And that convection current transfers heat energy to all parts of the beaker. To explain what's happening in a convection current, we need to look here at this animation. So, we've got a beaker of water. We're going to look very closely at what happens to this little bit of water as it flows around the convection current in the beaker. And the two things we're going to look at closely are the density, by looking at how close the particles are together, and the temperature by looking at how fast the particles are moving. So, let's start by lighting the Bunsen burner. And the first thing we can see is that the density has dropped, the part, it's been heated, the particles have moved faster, they've pushed each other further apart so that the water has expanded, and that expansion has caused the density to fall. And now it's at a lower density than the water around it, so it starts floating up to the top. So let it carry on. There's more water coming up behind it, so it gets pushed across the top. And now, if we watch the temperature, we'll see that it's starting to cool down. So it's contracting, the density increases, and so it sinks. So where it's being heated, it expands, becomes less dense, and floats upwards. It then starts to cool, it contracts, becomes more dense, and sinks downwards. And this change in density is what drives the convection current. So to sum up, the same thing can happen to air in a room We've got a, a hot radiator, then where the air touches the hot radiator, it gets heated, its temperature goes up, and so as the temperature of the air rises, it expands because the particles are moving faster and becomes less dense than the cooler air around it, and so that bit of warm air will rise upwards. When it gets to the ceiling, it can't go any further up, so it goes across, and as it goes across, it starts to cool so the temperature falls, the particles slow down a bit, they get close together, the air contracts and becomes more dense and so it sinks downwards and that causes this circulation of the air in the room which is what we call a convection current and that convection current transfers heat energy from the radiator to all parts of the room. So that is convection.